and uh, I'm very happy to be here. Um, and this is a special place. I'm a special American. So the first poem I'm going to read is called Buzz's Place. We didn't go there often, but it was always a treat. I loved the booths, but Mary liked that round table where they put the white tablecloth that ran down almost to the floor so she could scoot underneath and hide in the middle of the table underneath, eating the whole meal there sometimes. I hated when she'd say, pass the salt. I'd ignore her like out of sight, out of mind, but she'd just say it and say it louder and louder till someone would give in to her and pass the salt. She always got her way. I didn't like it much, but that was then, and this is now. Pass the ketchup, Marty. One time I saw on the menu fried starfish. No way, I thought, but still, I pretended it was no big deal and skipped it entirely. And this is a, a poem called Don't Forget Oil. Uh, I was... Um, going to buy a used car and I was told there was a opportunity to write a bunch of poems about cars, so I had a whole bunch of car poems. Don't forget oil. The other day my car talked to me, called at work and said, don't forget oil on your way home. And air, bring air too. Okay, I mumbled, tumbled. Weeks later on the road, we never raised it, as if the conversation had never happened. And uh, this is a poem that I wrote uh, oh, a couple of years ago. And uh, as I revised the poem for different things, I realized that the world keeps changing. So originally this poem had A-Rod in it, you know, Alex Rodriguez. And I thought, oh, it's fantastic. And then I read it to somebody and said, oh, it's such an interesting, you know, A-Rod. Then I said, oh, that's no good. So then I changed the poem and I put... Uh, Jeter in there. I figure, okay, Derek Jeter. That's a, you know, you know, now I'm trying to figure, what do you do with these poems or do you just throw them away? But this one's called Puppy Love. Oh, baby, puppy love. It's like springtime for rednecks. Springtime in the midst of the monsoon. Springtime when all cicadas are screaming their legs off at full bore. And there's a lightning storm and thunder. And Jeter just hit a grand slam home run in the bottom of the ninth, two outs, two strikes, and the Yankees win the World Series. That's the way it is. Oh yeah. And there's some passion and mooning and spooning and holding hands and that kind of mushy stuff too. But that's mostly for girls. Because for guys, they're thinking home run derby, firecrackers, and red hot tamales. <laughs> And then we were just on a, uh, a trip to Europe and uh, Ukraine. And um, it was a time when I was writing 30 poems for Tupelo Press. And it was hard to write when you're on vacation because most of the time you're saying, okay, where, when do we go to the museum and what do you want to eat and where do you want to go and how do we get there? As opposed to sitting passively and reflecting on your inner poetry soul. So anyway, this is one. We took a little boat on Lake Zurich, one of these long boats, and there's a tiny little girl in front of me reaching, turning around and reaching her hands out, little fingers. So this inspired this. Lake Zurich. A tiny girl in hot pink, filigree earring dangling, sat in front of me on the long, low boat heading into Lake Zurich waters. Swans danced at our side. A tiny pink girl turned to watch me. I made a clicking sound. Our eyes laughed together, mutual delight. She stretched her tiny fingers toward me. I clicked again. Our eyes widened. She stretched her hand further, reaching to touch my fingers, to connect, to say hello. How old is she? I asked the man next to her. Oh, one and a half, he said, with German accent and smile. What friends we had become, I thought 
as I disembarked at the next stop, the boat heading on, chestnut trees blooming. This is a uh, poem. poem. <laughs> it's called Once in a While. By the old dock near the bridge, on the side where they kept the sailboats, opposite the fishing fleet, the lobster catch was emptied into the old shack and sorted by weight. Once in a while, a big old one got caught, maybe 50 years old or more, and they'd keep it around for its special value until someone would come in wanting to buy it, or just because it was there wanting to buy it. And then it was gone, killed off and eaten, as if it were a common animal, instead of a something. And then the place returned to being just a lobster shack with maybe a four pounder or so on a good day. And this is a poem that uh, I was away for the weekend and all, you know, my love was with me and then she went home Sunday night and there I was, you know, having fun but all alone on Monday morning and thinking, this is a po poem called In the Air. Maybe you know these feelings. In the air. In the end, nothing mattered but her smile. He remembered it in the shower or passing a staircase or by the garden where rose bushes stood as thorns and sticks still too early in this season. Inside, he felt it when he heard her voice or when he smelled perfume on a passing subway or left in an elevator behind. In the end, its warmth, its warmth left him thriving, sustained, like toast hot and crisp with butter melting Nothing else to eat, nothing more needed. Honey floating in the air. And then, this is a poem that was inspired by a grandson who's two. Anybody wants to see pictures? They are available in this general area. Very cute fellow. Traffic, it's called. In the rush of traffic, a boy stood near the curb, clinging to a hand of his mother, waiting to cross the street. Please take me there, he thought, but there were too many cars. Please take me now, he thought, and she did, one step at a time, until the traffic applauded at the mastery of so minor an epic. Here's another poem that has uh, I wrote probably a year or two ago, and then I went to look at it again. And I said, "Gee, it has a different feel because of the evolution of politics and changes in the world and government. Not a lot, but still the same concept. It's called What's Below My Feet. China, China is right there, below my feet." There is a man walking to work now, if you look closely, waiting for the bus and laughing with his neighbor. It's night there, so it's hard to see from here. His little daughter is playing with a hoop and kissing him goodbye. They are singing a song, but it's hard to hear from here. He laughs, I'm sure, thinking that my feet are facing his, and he recognizes my soles as the ones he made last summer. <laughs> 